Hey guys, Brian Castro here from Better Chess Training. And in today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about attacking the king. Uh, I'm going to be giving you an example from one of my own games. And typically I like to use master games, but I actually uh, felt this game was very illustrative of some of the points that we're going to make. Uh, so I'm going to get right into the game, but we're going to cover some of the key points about attacking the king um, as we move along. So uh, let's get going here. Uh, I was white in this game. Uh, gets a player. Uh, this is on chess.com, an online game or a online match. Uh, he plays d5, knight to f3, and now h6. So um, kind of an odd little opening. And I notice sometimes online that sometimes people play these types of uh, offbeat openings to try to get you out of your preparation. But you still need to play good chess. The reason why preparation in theory is theory is because they are good moves. But uh, that's a different topic. So I play e3. And then my opponent plays bishop to f5. Okay. So uh, here, typically, um, as we have may have discussed before, whenever this bishop comes out early, and it typically in openings like the uh, Slav, um, this pawn here on b7 often becomes weak. So um, good response sometimes is to attack that pawn, and we'll see that in a second. I play knight to b2, knight b to d2. Uh, my opponent plays e6, so now he's locking this bishop outside of the pawn chain. And so here I play c4, and the idea here is to um, open up this diagonal for this queen so that I can attack uh, this pawn here. Okay, so my opponent uh, takes, and I'm able to develop this light square bishop with bishop takes c4. Uh, my opponent plays a6. So again, uh, playing sort of a uh, kind of a non-productive move. I guess th in this case, he's afraid of me checking him on b5, uh, but uh, not really the best response here. Uh, I think better would have been to try to uh, develop his kingside pieces so that he could get his king out of danger. So this is our first principle, is that um, in order to attack your opponent's king, it's not like you can just say, oh, I'm going to attack the king. Uh, you have to have positional justification for it. And typically that is in the form of your opponent weakening his structure um, so that you can attack parts of it. And because of the, as he tries to defend his structure, you then are able to um, unleash an assault on the king. Uh, one of the other principles um, about attacking the king is that if, uh, you know, one of the easiest way to do that is if your opponent doesn't castle. Okay, and this is why I always, uh, especially for my beginning players, tell you to castle fairly early. Uh, and I know some of you don't like to castle because you think you're wasting a move castling, but as you'll see, it can be uh, disastrous if you fail to do so. Uh, but let's keep going with this game here. So I play queen to b3, and notice this pattern. Whenever you see this bishop come out early, you'll see this often in a lot of openings uh, as a way to um, attack the weaknesses that, that black left behind by moving that bishop early. Okay, now my opponent plays b6, and um, this is another uh, pattern. And this is actually the, uh, I guess, the first big mistake that my opponent makes. Uh, in this game, and it's the one that's basically unrecoverable from because of uh, uh, the weaknesses he's incurred. As you can see here in this position, um, there are now a bunch of squares here that are undefended by pawns. And so these squares allow my pieces, if, if, if I have the opportunity to, uh, to get in there and take an advantage. So instead, uh, something like b5, pushing this bishop back, would have been better, uh, either to d3 or e2. And this game would have been, uh, I think, still slightly advantageous for me because I have a lot of, uh, more of my pieces are developed and ready to move into action, whereas he only has his bishop out. But this would have been better than what he played in the game. So, b6, um, I castled. One of the things to think about when you do have this type of edge and development is to you have to there's a judgment that comes with experience on when to i guess try to open up the position and take advantage so here i just castled because i uh, still want to get my pieces in the best position in order to attack okay 
knight to f6. Okay, my opponent's starting to finally uh, develop a little. And here is where I want to put a little more pressure. I play knight to e5. And now we're seeing I'm starting to eye these light squares as well as this f7 square. And my opponent plays knight b to d7, trying to attack this knight because it's a very strong piece. Now, uh, when I was analyzing this, um, the and, I, and during the game, I did consider knight to c6, but I didn't see a clear follow-up after he moves his queen out of the way. But I guess it's a decent move, uh, would have been a decent move as well, according to the uh, computer. Okay, but... Uh, Nonetheless, the move I played was fine, which is knight d to f3, so that if he takes, I just um, then I just take back with the knight, and I still have a nice uh, position. Okay, but what he did instead was he played bishop to e4, and as much as b6 was a big mistake, this was an even bigger mistake. And I think his idea here is to take on f3, and if for some reason I don't take back with the knight, he can then take on e5. But what the mistake here is that now this um, e6 square is weak, and as well as this uh, this f7 square becomes a little uh, becomes a little weak as well. So this is where I um, had to take advantage, or this was my moment, and. If you want to pause the video and try to figure out what I played next, go ahead and do so. I'll give you a couple seconds to do that. Okay, well, in this position, uh, with the king in the center, um, I decided to take my chances. I did do some calculation, but uh, mainly it was instinctual based on the position. I sacrificed on f7. Okay, and I'm attacking both his rook and his queen, so he is compelled to take this with his king. And easy follow-up, bishop takes e6 check. And um, here my opponent went to g6. Uh, if he goes, I could see, you know, it's understandable. If he goes back to, um, well, if he goes back to e8, then um, it's made in two. Okay? But even if he goes to e7... So after this check, if he goes to e7, bishop to f7 uh, leads to quite an initiative as well. He would have to move his queen out of the way, and it'd be um, it's not a forced checkmate, but you can see here that I have plenty of compensation for that piece I sacrificed. Okay, so instead he went to g6, and here uh, I started to realize that I can maybe... Uh, I had to be careful not to, um, I guess, get rid of my advantage. Because right now my opponent is, his king is not safe. He's not tucked away. But if I played um, maybe too, played a seemingly aggressive move, for example, I, I was, you know, if I played something like bishop to f7 check, yes, I get this check off, but you can just bring his king to h7 and after moves like g6 he can he's relatively safe okay and remember i am down material now i sacrificed a piece uh for two pawns so i really want to make the most out of this position so what i did here was um i attacked this bishop because if i can get my queen or my bishop onto this diagonal then that would be uh, pretty powerful okay and like, for example, if he were to retreat here, then he maybe starts to get into a little bit of trouble. Um, for example, with a move like queen to c2 check. Okay. And, you know, now it's he's going to lose material and give me back my material and I'll have a big advantage. Okay. Um, the other... Uh, option here, and, and after some analysis, both without and with, with and without the computer, uh, queen to e7 seems to be his best defense. But I can see that's hard to find uh, when you are being attacked as he was. Um, he played, uh, um, for example, knight takes e4, knight takes e4. This is some of the analysis I did. And then queen to d5 forks this knight and this rook. And then he has two options, mainly. If he brings his knight back, um, well, he's going to, if he moves his rook, then I take this with check. So he's in a lot of trouble there. Um, in fact, I think that's close to, uh, very close to, to checkmate. 
Uh, let's see, if he goes here, then I take here with check, and then if he goes here, then that is mate, for example. Uh, so if he moves his knight back to attack my queen, then um, it's queen to f5 mate. And then if he moves his knight back to d6 just to get it to safety, well, I would take this knight first. And if he takes with the queen, then I go ahead and take that rook, and I am ahead quite a bit of material. Okay? But let's get back to our main, uh, main game here. Uh, he plays bishop to f5. So he's trying to trade off some of this, um, some of my attacking material. And as I said, I don't want to play something like bishop to f7 check because um, if I did something like that, then uh, after king to h7, there's really no chance of me uh, mating his king anytime soon. And, and pretty much he's back in the game because remember I have to I gave up some material to do that so uh, as we said your opponent has to uh, uh, weaken his structure it has to be a positional basis for you to attack and then the second thing or the next part of that is that sometimes if you're king to get your king out in the open or to get at your king you might need to sacrifice material like I did on f7 okay let's get back uh, to the game he played bishop to f5 and here I kind of saw some of the sequence here. I played bishop takes f5 check. Now he cannot go back to um, can't go back to f7. He can't go to h um, h7. So he goes ahead and takes. And here is uh, the next. Uh, actually, this was probably the best move I played in the game. I took a while here because I was thinking, well, how can I continue with this attack? Because I have. Um, Got his king in the open, and how can I finish him off? Okay, so what I want you to do is pause it and actually take three or four or five minutes, however long you want to take, and see if you could find White's next move here. Uh, it's probably one of the best moves i played in a little while, but it follows this principle of attacking the king, and it will bring up, actually, actually it will bring up our next, uh, our next principle. Okay, uh, I hope you took a little time because it's very satisfying if you found a move, and it was it was it felt really great when I found this during the game. Uh, the next principle here is that once you've got your king out in the open, you want to uh, you want to make sure he stays in the open. Okay, you you want to do whatever you can as long as it's uh, tactically sound to keep that king from getting to safety. So. Uh, I was thinking I had to come up with some active way to attack, but I came up with a very simple move that has a lot of merit here. And I hope you found queen to f7. And the idea here is that this king now cannot go back into his own territory. He's stuck out in the open on my, you know, where I still can attack him. Okay, and, and uh, uh, here... Um, this was the best move in the position. Check this uh, with the chess engine, but uh, finding it in the game felt great. And you don't really need to calculate all the possibilities. You just know, uh, after a while, when you've played enough of these games or you've studied a bunch of these games, uh, you can see, you, you will have that instinct that, that uh, this is the right type of move. So, uh, anyways, Queen F7 was, was uh, I was very pleased by that. Okay, he plays G6. And I'm not quite sure what the exact idea behind this move was. Um, maybe trying to shut my queen out from coming over here to deliver checks, but it doesn't really help his position very well. I play e to um, e4 check. Notice that this knight is pinned by my queen, which is uh, why I was able to play this. Um, and he has to play uh, g5. Actually, he doesn't have to play g5. If he plays it to g4, uh, some of the similar uh, positions he's going to be getting checked soon. Um, now here in this position, I could have played a couple things. I guess uh, after analyzing, I could have played knight to f3 check. Um, and then after king to h5, played h3. But I just uh, played it in reverse, sort of. I, I played h3 first, planning on knight to f3 check next. Okay, So my opponent plays queen to e7. Now he's trying to uh, trade off this queen, of course. And uh, now he doesn't have any time. I, I play knight to f3 check, and king to h5 is forced. And here, uh, during the game, uh, I was thinking of playing uh, g4 check. Okay, 
And actually, this would have worked fine. But see if you could find um, another move that I could have played. And I want you to uh, participate actively in this in this lesson. But uh, see what other move um, you could have played. And uh, just take a moment and try to find that out. And then I'll show you what I played in the game. Well, as I mentioned, uh, G4 check does work uh, tactically. And I'll show you that line. Um, G4 check. And then knight takes G4. H takes G4 check. And then king takes g4. This is all forced. And now knight to h2 check. Now the king has several squares to go, but no matter where he goes, for example, king to h5, we bring our queen back. Um, and then it is a forced mate from there. Okay? So g4 check works in this position. Uh, but the other move I saw, uh, which I hope you saw as well, also wins. And that is queen to d5 check. Okay, now here uh, I had two replies that I saw from that my opponent could have played that doesn't uh, totally lose material right away, but uh, wins for me anyway. One is g5, and here I had in mind queen to f5, cutting off uh, the g6 square as well as threatening uh, g4 check, which would lead to mate as well. Um, and then the move that uh, I thought was the uh, most aesthetically pleasing here was knight takes d5, this uh, deflection of this knight from this square here, followed up by, this was played in the game, g4 mate. So uh, a nice quick game, but the idea was that uh, I was able to do this because of these preconditions and, and following these principles of attacking the king, which I'll summarize next. Okay, uh, let's review just some of the uh, principles. These aren't the only ones out there. And actually, I would recommend you check out uh, an old classic, uh, Vukovic's um, The Art of Attack. And I'll put a uh, uh, link to, an Amazon link to, to that book in the description uh, that goes into lots of different types of attacks. But here's some general principles that you can, can uh, think about in your own games. First off is that you need a positional justification of starting a attack on the king. Uh, so that could be a weakened structure, um, could be a failure to castle, or uh, yourself having a lead in development, which is, and these are all three of these we had in uh, the game that I showed you today. Um, the next part would be opening to the position, and often that could involve a, a pawn lever, uh, either in the center or if your king is castled, um, like with the H pawn or the A pawn, depending on which uh, side you're playing on uh, and often a peace sacrifice, depending on your position. And that's where that lead to development uh, and weakened structure comes in, because if your opponent hasn't developed his pieces to defend properly, uh, your ability to sacrifice a piece to get the king out in the open or to open the position will be to your advantage. And then finally, once you do uh, have opened that position, and this is where uh, it's a combination of both instinct and calculation, you want to make sure that you don't let that king get back to safety, okay? Um, and if you follow these principles in your games or you try to spot them in your games, you're going to be able to have more successful attacks on the king. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please press that like button. And if you are new to Better Chess Training, uh, Better Chess Training is about helping you to become the hero of your own chess story. And I would love to become a part of that journey for you. And if you subscribe, uh, you can... Check out new videos to help you improve your chess knowledge, improve your chess thinking, as well as uh, optimizing your performance at the chessboard. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in a future video.